Here is why I would never buy a franchise or start a franchise. Franchises are super popular because it's almost this massively easy model. Everything is set up for you to be successful. The menu's already set up, the ingredients, the recipes. If it's a food franchise, all these franchises, they say it is so much harder to fail when you start a franchise, and that may be true, but I'm gonna tell you something that a lot of people may have not thought through when it comes down to the actual money that you are profiting. You see, most franchises take anywhere from four to 6% of the gross sales, okay? So four to 6% of the gross sales has nothing to do with the profit, and a lot of people don't look at that. They just look at, oh, a, I'm not gonna use an example, but XYZ franchise brings in a million a year. Well, where the issue is, and I've reviewed a lot of franchises on my YouTube page, so go check them out if you want to actually review them of how much you could actually make, but the profit margin for a lot of these franchises is around 15%. Sometimes you can get to 20%, 25 but a lot of times it's around 15%, okay? So let's use an example here for me to paint the portrait of what a lot of people don't understand. Let's say a franchise is doing a hundred or a million dollars in sales, and let's say there's no franchise fee, right? 0% franchise fee. And the profit margin, instead of normally being 15 that I mentioned, let's say it's 20 because we're taking out the franchise fee of the 5%, right? So a 20% profit margin, they're making 200 grand profit. So that means you have a million in sales, you're profiting 200 grand, great, that's fantastic. But let's add back in the franchise fee. Well, the franchise fee is 5% of the gross sales. So 5% of the gross sales is gone. But how much of that is taken out of our profit. Well, 5% of a million is $50,000, okay? So $50,000 at a 15% profit margin because we have to pay 5% out. So 15% profit margin because we're paying 5% out puts us at 150K, okay? So now we have paid the franchise or $50,000, which is 25% of our profit, right? 200 grand, we didn't have to pay them, we have to pay them, it's 150, so they're getting 50,000. So if I own 25% in a business, and I'm a silent investor and I don't do anything, at the end of the year, let's say there's a profit of 100 grand, I get 25,000, right? But in order for me to be an investor, I would have had to done, I would have had to really do something. I would have had to probably give you capital, I would have had to potentially been there and worked there for the startup or made some sort of connection or done something of value to get that 25,000. Usually, 90% of the time, investors invest money for equity as, as far as silent investors. Now, if you're working in a business and you're given equity, that's because you're working in that business. But in this scenario, that's not what happened. You see, uh, to start a franchise, you have to pay a franchise fee. Sometimes these are anywhere from thirty to $75,000. And then you're getting hit again every single year for 50 k So who is really winning when you own a franchise? Well, the people that are winning is the franchisor. That's who's making all the money. So, you know, the conclusion here is that it is not as great of an, as an idea as you can possibly imagine because let's say instead of paying a franchisor to get or to get started, you have that 50,000, you could probably invest in a local marketing company or a national marketing company and a food consultancy company to get your menu, to get your recipes, to get your branding and your marketing down. You could invest a lot of money with independent third-party consultants to get your business off the ground and running. Every year, you could continue to pay those consultants 50000 a year of your profit if you wanted to and continue to build out your business. And the biggest thing here is once you own the brand and you own the business, then what you can become is the franchisor instead of the franchisee. So you can then say, you know what, I control the brand, I control what I wanna to do to build my business, so now I can actually franchise off my own brand and that's who is winning. The person who owns the brand and is franchising it out is winning, because let's go, let's go through it. They didn't have to purchase the land, you did. They didn't have to purchase the building or build it or build out the suite, you did. They don't even have to purchase their own product. They have relationships that they make sure the product is bought through. They have that. But let's face it, you're paying for the product. You're paying for your employees. You're paying for the material. You're paying for the chairs, the furniture. You're paying for literally everything. And on top of paying for everything, you're giving them a franchise fee, a consultancy fee, right? 
So, and then you're stuck in bed with somebody who's probably got 25% of your equity in the franchise with very limited liability if you look at the contracts, right? So you're taking 25% equity for a silent partner that you that has given you nothing except for some trademark systems that may or not be worth the 50000 a year plus the franchise fee at the beginning. And now you're stuck with them in case something goes south. You can't use the brand that you want to because they're protecting the brand and image, right? So you're, you are stuck and pigeonholed into being married to a franchisor. My advice for you is to take the hard road, to take the road that is less traveled, which is starting your own brand, starting your own company so that you can find success and eventually have a business that's worth millions and millions and potentially billions of dollars. Because if I own a franchise and it does 150000 in profit, I could probably only sell that franchise for about maybe two times the profit, maybe three times. Okay, so you're going to sell for five hundred grand. Well, you're going to need three or four franchises, but then you got to pay three or four franchise fees. you got to pay for all the build-out and everything. But if you can build it the other way, where you spend that money on creating your own brand, you're able to use the brand, maybe be strategic about where you want your marketing and build it out that way. That's how you can build generational wealth. If you look up franchises, you cannot make generational wealth off one franchise. Likely you need 10 to 15, which requires millions and millions of dollars to do. My thing is, if I'm gonna build millions of dollars into somebody else's brand, I don't wanna do that. I wanna build my own brand if I'm gonna be spending millions and millions of dollars. Now this is my opinion. I know some people have had a ton of success in franchises. I just think, you need to acknowledge that you have given up equity that you cannot see that you've given up. You may own 100% of your LLC that owns the franchise, but you have an equity partner that you have to pay every year regardless of where your profit is. You could have profited nothing, but you paid out the 5 to sometimes 10% franchise fee. So the higher the franchise fee is and the less your profit margin is, the more that they have equity in your business that you don't even know about that you're paying out every single year. So be smart when it comes to this. And if you have questions about other businesses that I believe, I have a lot of businesses that I reviewed on my channel, but if you specifically have any questions of like, hey, Nate, what business should I start? What should I really do? Uh, this is this is my situation. I'll be happy to help you out. And feel free to like and subscribe if you got value out of this business or this video. And I will continue to provide helpful content every day.